Well, hi everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Pushing the Limits here with Lisa Tamadi, and today I have a very special guest, someone who I've been following for a, a quite a long time now, and I'm really, really excited to have him on because he's going to share with you some mind blowing stuff today. So, Dr. Perry Nicholson, who's sitting in uh, New Jersey in the USA, is with us today. So, thank you, Dr. Perry, for taking your time. Um, uh, it's really excited to have you on. So, Dr. Perry, would you um, let's start a little bit about your background because you have a really interesting interesting backstory, if I may say. Um, you started off in chiropractic, but uh, where have you ended up? Give us a little bit of a background. Yeah, it's been a heck of a journey, by the way, honestly, right? Um, it, um, but first of all, thank you very much for having me on your show. It's really a privilege to be here. I'm very excited. Thank you. Yeah, it's just been a journey of exploration and discovery and changing where I'm going, honestly, based on lots of pain and suffering <laughs> and unfortunate in my own life of course but uh also other people that i've come across and um you know most of our lessons in life actually come from that right because otherwise why do you want to change if you feel comfortable there's no reason to something usually broadsides you right and you you get something that you didn't expect so I became a chiropractor roughly, geez, back in 1997 now. I can't even calculate the amount of years in my head anymore. Uh, and it was great, you know. I mean, I, I became one because I hurt myself bodybuilding and got a low back injury. And, of course, when you think low back, you think Cairo, right? Yep. That's unfortunately kind of what I got pigeonholed into is just treating musculoskeletal pain. And it was never really truly what I thought it was going to be. It's mm -hmm. a great profession, of course, but uh, it just didn't truly resonate with with my heart at, mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very close to actually leaving that profession at one point, wow. honestly. Um, but I didn't, and then I came across other avenues, other ways of looking at the body, and I got turned on to uh, the movement stuff, which I do a lot of now, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the soft tissue things and fascia, and then the brain and pain science and neuroscience. And then of course the big thing I'm into now through the lymphatic system. Yeah. And my journey really changed a lot to what I'm focusing on now when I got an autoimmune disease about five, going on five years ago now. Mm -hmm. And that just changed the course of my life because things that were supposed to help me were not helping me or the thought processes of medicine were making me worse. And what I thought I knew to help myself wasn't working and it forced me to really step back and have a different relationship with my own body, but mm -hmm. also trying to understand why the, why does the body actually do what it's doing? I mean, there's gotta be some reason. It just doesn't all of a sudden flip a switch and decide to make your life miserable. Exactly. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it never happens. <laughs> Nothing happens like, like that except trauma but you know it builds up over time and it just was uh, something that i don't know i i'm i look back on it it was really really rough but i'm also truly grateful honestly that i wouldn't have been able to discover what what i'm doing now and the kind of person i am now honestly yep if i didn't go through that hardship and i find that when i speak to other people who've been through similar things they all always say the same things it really sucked when I was going through it, but I'm, I don't think I would have taken yep. it back. Yeah. If I could have. And this is one of part, part of your story that really resonated with me because it, you know, I've had a couple of journeys myself and um, without going through, when you go through something horrible like that, it does make you think, hang on a minute, the normal stuff isn't working. Okay. I can either give up and, you know, crawl away into my space and be miserable for the rest of my life or sick or whatever. Or I can go, well, hang on, what else is out there? And mm -hmm. let's tear open some doors. And you're highly motivated when you're in that state. So you start to look. And when you when you talk to, you know, I've talked to a lot of doctors and, and, and people who have had their own journey, whether it's with a loved one or themselves, and when they've gone, hang on a minute, this isn't working. This isn't working. The stuff that I think is meant to be working isn't working for me. And that's when they suddenly go, hang on, light bulbs start going off and they start to explore. So, you know, when you get an autoimmune disease, 
it's it, it feels almost like a betrayal of your own body, doesn't it? It's like you know, why are you attacking your own body? What was the immune uh, autoimmune disease that you were confronted with, and and how did that then make you think, you know change your direction exactly? Great question. Well, for mine, they didn't even have a name for it. <laughs> <laughs> and even so, if they so did, weird. I wouldn't care. Yeah, like, honestly, because that that can be even more dangerous. Because yeah. Yep. You once you have a name, yeah, you, you become the label. Yes, and a lot of times you begin to manifest exactly what that diagnosis says you should have. I've had tons of people get way worse when they've gotten a, a quote unquote answer wow. for what it is because just because I give you a diagnosis doesn't tell me anything about how you got it. Yeah, and that's what people really need to understand because. Many people can have the same diagnosis, but you didn't arrive at it the same way. Yeah. That is really critical for people to understand. You may have ended up at the same destination with the label, but you took completely different pathways to get there. That's the uniqueness and individuality of the body. Um, the autoimmune disease means that, you know, uh, the body just all of a sudden starts to attack itself and they don't know why. Autoimmune disease is just, I have, we don't know what it is. And, the hard part and why it's so difficult to treat is it's never just one thing yeah. with an autoimmune disease. And that's why where medicine can get really lost and is struggling because they're really, really good at if you can identify what, what A is that's causing the problem, they can go after it like, like a bacteria or an infection or a trauma. If A then B, yeah, like that. Very linear. Yeah, it's but linear. When you're, yeah, when you're dealing with a complex system, which is the human body, it's here's a tip: it's never ever linear. <laughs> yeah, never. It, it's all over the damn place. I mean, you, there's so many moving quote unquote parts that it mind boggles you of the possibilities. And one thing that I say all the time is that nothing is more terrifying than the idea of unlimited possibilities. <laughs> but that's what it is like when somebody comes in to see you. And that's why you have to become a detective in a way and mm. really deal not with the diagnosis, but with the, the person in front of you who has the diagnosis. You have to backtrack their pathway towards getting there but unfortunately in the world of medicine when you get diagnosed with something you get the quote unquote this all right here's your protocol that yeah. you have to take now that you have this yeah and yep. then this is what you should expect and so they already put the outcome in your mind or expectations or the worst that they'll pigeonhole you and tell you you won't be able to get better or yep. <laughs> get to a certain point and there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm like, that's BS. Completely disagree with you. Totally. You, you can tell me <laughs> that, but it's just going to go right out the other ear. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's because what I we, did. Because we are such complex creatures. And like you say, we, we come to this, this conclusion or this problem that we've got through a myriad of things and this is when you when you have the the normal approach though it makes sense because it's linear because it's reductionist because it's like you know a plus b equals c uh, and we can follow that through and when you start chucking in other aspects it, you know um as a, as a health coach myself i just even find it you know i feel like i'm a detective you know yeah. i'm on the i'm on the trail of what is it that's actually you know and what are the it's always a multi-pronged approach that i end up with you know it's never a one pill solution which unfortunately most people want they want right. the magic pill to come and rescue them they want the knight in shining armor to come along and go here you go and you're fine now and unfortunately that's not how the body works is it yeah, not with not with chronic disease and autoimmune disease. It, it might work that if you're lucky, in the beginning with acute care and traumatic care. I mean, and they're great at that. I, there's no system of medicine that's better than modern medicine of acute care trauma care. Like, you know, yeah, totally. You're, you're not going to come to see me for limp work if you got your arm hanging off. You got to put <laughs> yeah. that back on first. But then you better see me afterwards because yeah. I know that once they put that sucker on, you're going to have some problems later because they're going to say, you know, yep. I, see you later. I'm not, you're, I'm you're good. Yep. I'm like, ah, yeah, not so much. 
Yeah. But <laughs> that's one of the reasons why we're really struggling these days with the increase in autoimmune and chronic disease and people are not getting better because we're still trying to go after things in the old school style of medicine where we treat something like an infectious disease. You find the cause, then give you something for it, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. But with this one, it's uh, completely different. And you can have a mixture of things as, and something that could be the catalyst that was decades prior that set something in motion for what you're experiencing now mm -hmm. that medicine unfortunately today will look as clinically irrelevant yep but it's actually highly relevant <laughs> yeah yep. highly relevant because it because the body is so great at compensating and adapting to stressors you might not know you have an underlying issue for many many years because the body's so good at trying to protect you and cover it up and say Listen, I got this for you. You're not, I know you're not going to feel this right now because I'm just doing my best to protect you. But all those compensations mechanisms eventually can break and with chronic stress because yeah. they're finding that the number one cause of chronic disease is incessant stress, never-ending stress. Yeah. That happens all the time. And it just breaks your body systems down. And here's the thing that's been the biggest... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It it just all made sense to me when I but I began to look at it this mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So I was working as a chiropractor and helping people in pain, but I was still really only looking at one possible system of the body having a problem: the nervous system mm -hmm. and the musculoskeletal system. Yeah, you know, the joints and the fascia and the muscles and the tendons and ligaments and that's great but it's only one part of the whole system mm -hmm. you've got a lot of other ones that i was thinking well i don't need to know about these because i'm a chiropractor what do i need to know about the digestive system beyond okay pass my boards and i know what it does yeah but how that might relate to your back pain for instance yeah and, not to mention your your vascular system and your lymphatic system and your hormone system. It's, it's all those things matter, and that's what a complex system is. It just mixes all these different things together and how they relate to each other. So I, my term now is I tell people I don't even – I think more like an engineer yep. than, I, than a yep. doctor because an systems. engineer has to look at how systems work together yes I mean, not just that's parts brilliant. that's brilliant right yeah and medicine breaks things and parts to try yes. to understand things it's very newtonian yep. where i'm going to take something here and i'm going to break it down to really really small parts to help me understand it and it will but it doesn't tell you anything about how it works together with another part yeah because if i have an a and a b and i break a and b down to their smallest components it doesn't tell me how A and B, when I stick them together, how they're going to work. Yeah. Right? And especially the, the, when... Yeah, the synergy that... Especially that when... The, yeah. Yeah, because A and B are always going to change how they work together based on the environment that A and B is in. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. You're always in a new environment all the time. Yep. So it's never the same. It's never the same. But when you understand that concept... It's a huge eye opener, and then you'll usually find your answer for your problem uh, in another system that you haven't been looking at. Yeah. Not not the quote unquote painful system, and that's what yeah. stop chasing pain means. I, we certainly treat people in pain, of course, but I don't want you to chase it. That just means just treating the side of pain and doing the same old thing looking all the, at the time. Looking at the symptoms and yeah, not getting yeah, to the root I, I want you to look somewhere else and I really want you to think. Now I don't even think, I, this is the way I think, you don't come to see me for the therapy that I'm going to do to you. You come to see me for the way I think. Yep. Because the way I think is going to determine how I'm going to do the therapies to you. And that's I don't, a really important word I chose there. I didn't say what therapies. Uh -huh. I said how, how I'm going to do the therapies. Yep. Because a lot of people use the same therapies with different results. 
because it's not what you're using, it's how you're using it. It's how you're mixing them together and when you're mixing them together and where you're doing it. Just That's like something like making that, a cake. If you do it in the wrong order, you're not going to get a nice cake at the end. That of it. is really important for people to understand. And the, the big thing for me where I was just like, that makes complete sense where it's, it's not necessarily what you're doing. I mean, that's important, but if you can just shift some things around and I began to experiment with myself first, mm -hmm. but then also with clients because I'm trying to get them better. I'm mm. trying to go outside of the proverbial box. And I mm. said, okay, well, I got these therapies. Let me see if I can switch them around a little bit and do, instead of doing A before B, let me do D before A and see what we get. Right? Or here's a novel idea. How about I do it to a completely different part of your body? That might be something kind of cool to see. And then the <laughs> results began to get better. Wow. And then you started to develop your own systems. Cause, so you have a, a, a website at, uh, and a brand called Stop Chasing Pain. If anyone wants to go and check out uh, Dr. Perry's work on there. Um, and you, you work a lot. A lot of the work that I've been looking at lately that you're doing is in the lymphatic uh, system, yeah. which is, you know, to be honest, I've not actually looked at that system prior to to coming across yeah. you. I've, I've known a little bit about, oh, yes, you can go and get a lymph massage didn't really understand and still, you know, learning um, how that sort of massively influences us. So can we go a little bit into now your lymphatic, uh, your, your, what do you call it? The body aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I think that's a great analogy. And tell us a little bit about the lymph system and then, you know, we can get into some of the others. So that, because I, I think this is a really important piece of the puzzle. Uh, and it's a, it's a system we don't even really think about, you know, um, very often, I don't think. No, not at all. Great question. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I could talk about this for days. Honestly. <laughs> uh, I'll just keep going. And don't feel too bad because just people in medicine have no idea what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a long forgotten or overlooked system that we didn't think was really, really important unless you had cancer. That's the only time you really hear about lymph is you got cancer and you got to be careful because cancer can spread through the lymphatic system. And that's true, but it's also designed to kill cancer. That's part of its job. Uh -huh. Okay. But that in and of itself should tell you something. If, if something can spread through your whole body by a system, it's probably a little important, yeah. just a little bit. And it tells you that it goes everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Or the only other time you hear about it is if you have a body part that's 25 times bigger than it's supposed to be, which means yep. it's really swollen. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah. Who, who put the elephant leg on me, right? And then that, because it can't drain the inflammation. And I always say it's the most important and neglected system in the body that we're not looking at for healing uh, from chronic pain, autoimmune, and performance. And I've got to be honest with you, I didn't look at it either. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I didn't look at it is because I wasn't suffering enough to make myself look at it. Yeah. Like I was trying anything and everything to try to get better with my autoimmune disease. And I was damn near died, got very close to it. Wow. And uh, I only discovered the limp through that journey. Mm -hmm. Cause otherwise I think I maybe spent like 15 minutes on it in school. And yeah. then I just went on. Cause let me show you the good stuff. Let's talk about the nerves. Right. <laughs> uh, and then we didn't cover the lymphatics, but th that system is crucial uh, because it's the system that is designed to remove toxins and bacteria and bad stuff from your body. It's part, it's a central part of your immune system and your immune system is designed to kill stuff. Mm -hmm. Get things out that are not supposed to be there that can make your life miserable or yep. make you sick. And that's bacteria, mm -hmm. viruses, fungus, parasites, uh, cancer, mm -hmm. also your own metabolic cellular waste. Mm -hmm. So just from your body breaking down every day, I mean, you lose billions. That's with a B, <laughs> billions of cells every day. Yep. And when they die, that's got to get out. I mean, yeah. all that stuff's got to leave you. Mm -hmm. And when cells work, they create waste like you do. Yeah. Every and that cell waste is has to waste. get out. Yeah. Imagine if all of that stuff, which is coming at you all the time, 
could not get out. Well, we'd look and it like stayed it. inside of you. Yeah. Well, you're not going to feel too good. No, you're not right? going to live long, actually. <laughs> but it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen like fast. So yep. you don't notice it. it. It's slow. And that's where you begin to get, I'm tired all the time. I'm fatigued all the time. I got brain fog all the time. I got this symptom. I got that symptom. I got this now. I got that now. And you all these slow breakdowns. And then we just look at it as, ah, uh, it's just part of life uh, <laughs> or the complete moronic one of you're just getting older. I hate those sorts of things. It's, I hate and, that one. <laughs> I do it's too, not a, right? That's not a reason. <laughs> no, you're it's not a, supposed to break down like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's supposed to feel bad just because yeah. it's common doesn't mean it's normal exactly exactly and i know when i was sick not a single person mentioned limp to me not a single one i had to find it through my own work yep, yep. and i i was always searching in all my years of trying to figure out one why people would always have things that would continue to come back mm -hmm even despite all the great treatments, which can help. Yeah. But I'm like, why are they not helping for long? Yeah. What's the deal? And it, this one, when I got sick, forced me to find that answer. Mm -hmm. And for me, it comes down to this, is that you're only going to heal as well as that you can detoxify your body. Because in order to heal, you got to get bad stuff out. And that's mm -hmm. what healing is. Healing is where you're going to get sick, right? You get injury, you get trauma, you get damage. That stuff has to leave. Yep. And then your your body has to be able now to make new cells. Build new stuff. Yeah. New fresh stuff. Here's one guy I learned from. His name is Dr. Jerry Tennant. And I recently had him on my podcast, the Stop Chasing Pain podcast. And he said this phrase that stuck with me. And I always say it twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, chronic disease occurs when you lose the ability to make new cells that work. Wow. Chronic disease occurs when you lose the ability to make new cells that work, which makes sense, right? Because if yep. I can make new cells that work, I wouldn't be sick. Yep. Because right? we're, we're replacing billions of cells all the time, like I said. But when we lose that ability and we start losing tissue, and we start getting poor photocopies, if you like, of each of the cells, that's when right. we start to have aging. That's when we start to die. That's yeah. when we start and to have so problems. It's just, then it's just then, okay, well, here's the next logical question. What do you need to make new cells? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, yeah. the first thing you need is you need to have an environment that is conducive to anything wanting to grow at all. Yep. So the environment is the key. That's called epigenetics. Mm -hmm. Your environment determines your course of your health. Yep. Um, and not your genetics. genetics. Yeah. Yep. Right. So genetics loads up the gun, your environment mm -hmm. pulls the trigger. That's exactly. the analogy that they have. And then I'm like, okay, well, that makes complete sense. Then I said, well, what system in your body is the big controller of the environment that all of your cells are living in? which is a mostly fluid environment. You're 80% you're water. So that's a lot of liquid. So the lymph. There you go. The lymph, wow. right? I never thought of so it. So that's like why that. I came up with, well, if I have that one system that's supposed to control all where these cells live, I should make sure that guy works well. And that's why I came up with the body aquarium analogy because if people understood like when you have a fish tank, an aquarium, mm -hmm. It's a lot of liquid in there, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got living things in there called fish. Well, for <laughs> you, it's your cells, right? You got all different structures in there, right? From your coral to your rock to your uh, castles and all that. Yeah. And you know that if you've got really beautiful water and it's perfect in there, everything thrives. Wow, and, that's a brilliant life analogy. Is great. Yeah. Right. But you also know what happens when the water starts to decay, uh -huh. when it doesn't filter well, yep. it gets stagnant, it doesn't have a lot of movement to it. Not enough then oxygen. All the, fish, all the fish poop, all your cell poop, I say it. Yep. Well, it stays in there. 
And then you start to have water that gets what? Very green, very yep. murky. You get bi you get film, like this goopy film everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. that's called biofilm. That's when wow. the bacteria sets in and the viruses, the bacteria release a protective biofilm coating on them. Wow. And then, so it's just everything in the tank eventually dies. Wow. Right? Okay. So then I'm thinking to myself, well, you might want to make sure that filtration system works really, really well. And if you do, then what happens is if you replaced all that water and you put new fish in, if you didn't change the filter, they're all going to die again, right? Yep. But if you do change the filter, they might die. I mean, that happens. But their chances of thriving dramatically Your environment is beautiful and, and it's clean. the same thing with you wow and I'm like that makes sense so if i got all these therapies that i'm doing and i can feel good for a little while but i'm like did anybody check your filter nobody changed the filters <laughs> and so you're stagnating it's it, that's a key word stagnation because life is about movement Fluid is about movement. And, you know, if it stagnates, that's why they use that term in Eastern medicine a lot. It's called stagnation of your energy, wow. stagnation of your chi. Yeah. In Western medicine, what that means is that your fluids are just sluggish. They're not moving. Yeah. Okay. And then when that happens from a Western medicine physiological perspective, that means you don't get nutrient delivery to cells. You don't get oxygen delivery to cells and you don't get toxins out. And that means you don't have what you need to make a new cell that works. So hello, here comes chronic disease. Right? Wow. That makes so, so much sense. It does. When you think about it from that perspective of all those systems. So one of the phrases I always say is that no system in your body ever works alone. Mm -hmm. It never, ever heals alone and it never gets injured alone yep they always Makes work absolute together sense. yep but the way we treat people is the exact opposite we're all about specialization of systems yeah so if you go to the doctor and you've got doc i got a problem with my prostate well you got to go see the urologist i got a problem with my gut well, you got to go see the gastroenterologist. And mm -hmm. the urologist and the gastroenterologist don't they talk don't to talk. each other because yeah. they're two different parts. Yeah. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, your body doesn't know what a prostate is and it doesn't know <laughs> what a, a digestive system is. It's all in one system. It. It's just, dude, I'm just one thing. Yeah. Why, why are you doing, why are you breaking that up? And you realize that they intimately connect with each other. And that's why we get lost. And is that, be, is that come about because, you know, the way that medicine has evolved, that it's become so intricate and so detailed that no one person can be across all systems. Obviously, you cannot be an absolute uh, expert in, in, you know, cardiology and uh, urology at the same time. Um, yeah. And is this where the connecting the dots people need to come in someone who likes like like you who works in different system has an understanding of the broader system so that they can actually yeah, well, work I think, together i think in order to be a specialist you better be a really damn good, good generalist, generalist first yeah 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 like yeah. you need to understand how the whole system works and then you can start to go down a specialized branch mm -hmm. right i mean dude if you're operating on my heart i want somebody who knows the heart inside and out yeah yeah i also yeah. want them to understand <clears throat> how that heart relates to all the other systems because maybe they can have a grasp of why in the hell my heart went in the first place or because they can fix that. But if you don't get to all the other systems that have related to that, or you have that generalist mm -hmm. who is able to now bridge the specialist together so that they, I just want them to start to communicate with each yeah. other, and talk yeah. with each other. And I read a great quote once that, you know, specialization is great, but it was a specialist to somebody who knows more, knows more and more about less and less. Yes and less. I've heard that one too. Which is okay if you want to go into something yeah. like that. But I was able to um, get much further in my ability to help heal myself. But also when I began working with a lot of really seriously chronically ill people with autoimmune diseases, 
when I came from that generalist standpoint. Yes. Right? I, love, and, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I never would have gotten to that if I, if I didn't get sick uh, on my own. Yep. <clears throat> but, because I really wasn't seeing in my practice, I was seeing a lot of chronic musculoskeletal pain, mm -hmm. but I really wasn't seeing a lot of uh, autoimmune type cases. But the universe really has a way of pulling you or taking you in a direction where you're supposed to be going. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, now that I had it, then everybody else started to try to, to, to they were finding me that yeah. way. Yeah. And, you know, it, and then also I realized that many of the chronic musculoskeletal things that I was going after were not musculoskeletal problems at all. They were they were lymphatic system problems or digestive system problems and wow. immune system problems, just showing their vulnerability in the musculoskeletal system. So then That's I'm like, it. aha, well, this makes sense because mm -hmm. how many different ways can I treat a lower back with ultrasound and muscle stem and heat and ice and move and exercises and it still hurts. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, how about I flip you over and let me press in your abdominal region a little bit, which is where most of your lymphatic system resides is in uh -huh. your abdomen yeah. and see if it hurts there. Wow. And now I'm going gonna, gonna to say probably not. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say always because it is, nothing is always, but it's like 99.9999% of the time when I do that, you are not going to be happy when I press in that. Because <laughs> I know so it's going to hurt. Yep. I know it's going to hurt. But nobody ever knew that the abdomen hurt because nobody pressed on it. Yep. And, and we didn't know the connection to is, the back. <laughs> yeah, everybody's going after the back. And, yep. and my point is, your abdomen is not supposed to hurt when I press on it. <laughs> you know? Yep. And, it's just and, that it's, it's been vulnerable. It had inflammation. It had problems there. But we always go after you know, where it hurts. Yeah. I mean, we've even found that, like, you know, like, uh, just in, in the people I've been working with, you know, when I give an example, yeah, a, a young man saw back. Uh, yes, he's got some mechanical troubles. When you look at the x ray, he's got some, you know, discs that's bulging. Um, but I've had success with him more in working with his gut health. Uh, getting him to do more stretching, more movement, getting him to actually get some aerobic exercise so there's actually some movement in the body, um, right. changing his diet, putting him on um, a few different supplements. Uh, in other words, you're, you're, you're attacking the, the inflammation in the body. You're looking at those other systems. Now, for me, what's exciting is to now start to discover the lymphatic system because then it'll be, it'll be another thing that you can add into the mix to be able to yeah, have that's big. It's not always just the back. It's not always a mechanical issue when it appears to be just a mechanical issue. Like a, a sore knee is not always a sore knee. Um, and that's a leap for people, you know? They think, no, no, I hurt my back, I fell over, and therefore I have this, and therefore I need either surgery, or I need, you know, a chiropractic adjustment, or I need X, Y, Z, and then they do that and it doesn't work. And then you start looking at, well, why is that not working? You know, it's meant to be. Um, yeah. And what you need to understand, well, that's a great, um, I'm so glad you brought that up is because what you'll find is this, is that, um, just because let's say you had, um, you were bending over to pick something up and quote unquote, your back went out. Mm. Yeah. That can not necessarily be the cause of the back pain, but what happened is, is that that injury was the catalyst that actually set something off in another system that has been lying dormant for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It just manifested itself in the back at that point. So you'll say, okay, well, it's, it's this because I did that. Right. Yeah. So we always want to ask the basic fundamental clinical question is what happened before what happened is, is what you want to say, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that's the, the true cause either. Mm. Mm. Because we know that when we look now at diagnostic testing, there is no correlation in pain science with the amount of damage seen on uh, a diagnostic test and your level of pain. Wow. Because I can see somebody who has a knee that's a disaster on an x-ray. They've got no cartilage left. 
and they're like, oh, thanks for telling me I got no pain. Can we go running now? And like <laughs> Zero. And then I got somebody who I can't see anything on the x-ray and they can't move. Yeah. Right? So you can't, you can't link because it looks like this, that it's that, but it's a slippery slope because when somebody sees something like that, then automatically they're like, that's gotta be why it hurts. Again, it's that label. And then you get, you get stuck in there in your brain of mm -hmm. I've got a disc, I've got a herniated disc in my lower back, which you can have, of course, but it doesn't mean that that's where the pain is coming from. It exactly. certainly can, because I've been there, right? But what I'm saying is, is that how about you can go after that, but you want to go after the other things too, which begs the question, well, how do you know what you need to go after as well? Well, that comes from being the detective and being the engineer mm -hmm. by asking really, really great questions mm -hmm. in your history. And another one is assessing and pressing on and pushing on many other areas besides your low back. Yep. And the gut one is a prime example because if you have such inflammation in your abdominal region and a problem with your gut, sometimes known as leaky gut, for instance. Mm -hmm. That's where the majority of your lymphatics sit, and then your wow. lymphatics swell up when stuff leaks through the gut or you got inflammation because the lymphatics are designed to reduce, eliminate inflammation, mm -hmm. and they get overloaded. Then you build up pressure in your lower back, and then you restrict motion in the organs around your abdomen, which influences how the muscles move that support the spine. Wow, that makes so much sense. So... I can put you through your corrective exercises and your movements and mobilize your back, which I certainly would do absolutely mm -hmm. as well with, with the other stuff, with the abdominal work, moving your organs around a little bit, moving your lymphatic system a little bit. And then once you do that, then the person's like, you know what? I don't know, this sounds a little bit crazy, man, but I feel way better when you did that. <laughs> today in conjunction with the other stuff because i i'm working multiple systems mm -hmm. together that way yeah and that was the big thing for me because the lymphatic system and the organ system of the body or the that the um abdominal organs primarily nobody really pays attention to until you're like really, really sick or double over in pain. So they seem unimportant or unrelated to your back. And they're not. Yep. Right? And there's always some downstream problem and your lower back is just the end point, right? Yep. So I, I have this system that I teach that I put together after looking at all the systems of the body and I call it the, the body ecosystem hierarchy and an ecosystem is taken from the nature ecosystem for a reason, because everything out there outside your door works together all the time. Mm -hmm. no, nothing is independent and a hierarchy means this. Everything's important in the hierarchy. Some are just more important than others. All right. And then, so when I look at the body, I look at all the different systems and I know there's, there's a, this is how I look at the body. There's a priority system of your systems to your body, which means that your brain thinks some are more important than other ones. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, okay, doc, well, how the hell did you determine what's more important? It's like, I'm not determining at all. Your brain is. And I, I put it this way. I know from studying pain science, the number one thing your brain doesn't want to do is be dead. Like, yeah. I just want you to survive and not die. If yeah. we can accomplish that, thumbs up for everything else. Mm -hmm. I'm good to go. <laughs> so my hierarchy is built on this. The more there is a problem with one of those systems, the faster you die. Mm -hmm. So then the brain will prioritize a system that will kill you faster when something goes wrong with it. Wow. Okay. Right. So because yeah, it's gonna because otherwise it'll, it'll you'd be totally dead. Right. Yeah. 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 So the bottom of the very bottom of my hierarchy, there's nine, there's nine uh, systems. Nine is the side of pain. Wherever you point, that's the least important part for me. Like doc, it hurts on my elbow. Okay. That's, that's good. The end. Okay. I'm going to start there, but it's the least important thing, but I'm going to start there. 
And then up from number eight, all right, side of pain is where you point. Number eight is the musculoskeletal system, muscle, facet, joint, ligament. Right? They're all important, but that's usually what we always go after. Mm, it's, muscle, it's facet, primary. joint, ligament, right? Rub it, you know, yank it, pull it, twist it, whatever, rub all these sorts of things. And that's good, but it's all the way down here. Yep, got you. And number one on the system, obviously, is the brain, because yep. if you lose that, you're yeah, toast. Nothing you works. Know better than anybody with that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Your, your mom's story, it, it, every, all the other systems are gone. Brain. Absolutely. Gone. So, number one is the brain. And then the number one th thing that affects the brain is stress. Mm -hmm. So there's the stress factor. But number two in my system is lymphatic system. Wow, number two. Number that two. That is that important. Yes, because remember, all the other things sit inside the tank. Yep. So two one, yep. is the tank. Yeah. And then they now, because it can actually be number one too, because... They now know, they've known for 200 years, but they're finally letting it out, uh, that you actually have lymph in your brain. It's called glymphat. Glymph, glymph yeah. from glymph glymph Yep, yep. So actually, two is still number one. So it's they part of the two. same system. So here's the way I look at it. In my world, I'm still going to go after where it hurts. I'm still going to go after number eight, muscle, facet, joint, ligament. But I'm also going to go straight after number two. Mm -hmm. Because now I know if I go after, pardon me, if I go after two and I go after eight and nine, they work towards the middle together mm -hmm. this way. Yep. Because if I have to start at eight and nine, I have to fight my way all the way up to number one. But if I start at number two, I can trickle down and help three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, just one. from doing number two, right? Gotcha. And, and number three is your gut. Wow. So brain, lymph, gut, top and of the tree. And guess where you have most, the number three is also lymph because you have it's the majority of your lymph in your gut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And then their brain gut connection, we're all now starting to be aware of how connected, how it became, you know, it was part of the same tissue when you're an embryo and then got split off and the vagus That's nerve. True. And so all, yeah, right. all, all, all of those sort of things are interrelated. I've got a tricky one for you, or well, not a tricky one, but a, a question that's running around in my head. So I've been studying the methylation process and I've been studying, you know, um, detox mechanisms and, and uh, I'm studying functional genomics at the moment and looking at detox pathways. I just got my DNA test back and okay, I don't want any labels, but my detox genes are a disaster. <laughs> and my, um, uh, so I'm thinking, ooh, okay, and my methylation genes, if I look at them as a whole, are not great. Um, how much, uh, so what, what's the interrelationship between, say, your, your filtration organs, your kidneys, your liver, even your skin to a degree, uh, and your lymph system? Do they yeah. work? How, is, how, are, how are they connected? They're all connected, right? So, and, and first of all, most people have a methylation issue, yeah. right? Most people have that gene flipped. Yeah. And that's just part of the detox pathway. Right? You, have, you have three phases of detox. Phase one, phase two in the liver. Phase three is going poop. poop. Pooing yeah. poop. Phase three. So that's where your, your uh, kidneys and your intestines come into play because that's phase three mm -hmm. detox. Right? Mm -hmm. Getting but the liver also dumps up to 50% of the lymphatics into the system. Okay. So the right. liver is intricately connected to the lymphatic. To the lymph. oh, and right. nothing, nothing enters the body without going through the liver anyway. Yeah. Right? Yep. And then the liver feeds into the lymphatics. But everything that goes to the lymphatics eventually makes its way out through the kidneys. Yep. Okay. Through so, urination. So yep. that's one of the reasons why, but, uh, why you need to make sure that when you go through the program, one of the things that if people have kidney issues, you have to tread lightly when you begin to do lymphatic work and also heart issues because the lymphatic system works directly with the cardiovascular system. The lymph 
dumps into the veins and then the veins dump to the heart and then the heart takes everything back out no longer as lymph but what's called plasma mm -hmm. and if the heart is uh if you have congestive heart failure for instance or it's it can't take it because there's right. so much coming back at it okay and then um so that's where all these systems intricately connect together so you your body has to detox right and one of the things when you put stuff in it has to get out yeah and the lymphatics is the big primary way but other systems like you mentioned are liver you've got lungs you've got yeah. skin and also by the way the skin is the uh, next major place that lymphatics sit uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you got your kidneys right all those sorts of different things if any one of those systems becomes vulnerable or becomes blocked then the body just says okay well i'll make another one do more Right. You're going to take, take overload time. because your friend up the road can't do it. Yeah. And then you get overloaded, right? But most people will have uh, congested lymphatics that they're not working. So they do a lot of, try to do a lot of liver detox. Mm. But if you know that the liver is going to send 50% of the lymph into the lymphatic system, what happens if your lymphatic system is stagnant? Your yeah, liver's going to be then the liver is going to detox, but it's going to send it to something that can't take it, which means it's going to send it right back to the liver. All right. Or it's, it's going to make you worse because then you can't detox. Okay? And if you're already got a genetic marker for it, you can't detox, then you'll have that where I'm like, oh man, I can hardly do anything and I get sicker. Yep. Or it'll send it out somewhere else. That's why a lot of people who do like liver detoxes or things like that get really bad skin issues. Yep. Yeah, because it's it coming out, out. Comes out through the skin. And the skin is never just a skin issue. It's always something else. Yep. So one of the things that is a central tenet in my work that I learned in osteopathic medicine, which is osteopathic medicine uh, has been around for a while. And one of their central tenets, because they were one of the only people who talked about lymphatics, was this. Drainage precedes supply. Wow, drainage, drainage precedes, precedes supply. supply. Which means you have to drain the toxins out first before you can supply the body with the nutrients it needs to heal itself. Gotcha. That's really important. Yeah. So, in my world, lymphatic work always comes first. Lymph comes before anything else because I need to make sure that I can ensure that toxins can get out before I start to work on you, because yep. I'm gonna drive toxins through you when I work on you. But I also gotta get toxins out before I put nutrients in. And you remember when we talked about order of things? Yes, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Because mm. everybody wants to put nutrients in you first. Yeah, yep. You need to get vitamins yeah. in, need to get nutrients in, need to get nutritious food in, need to get medicine in. Yes, you do. However, you need to detoxify, you need to start to do that first because just because I put nutrients in doesn't mean they're actually going into the cells of the body mm -hmm. at all. Because what I'm gonna contend and when you learn about the science of how cells work, they're not gonna be able to absorb the nutrients to their full capacity because they're surrounded in tox toxicity. Wow. So they can't absorb things through the cell membrane because yeah. first of all, they can't go through that crappy fish tank to get to the to cell. To get to the cell membrane. And then even if the cell could get the nutrients, it's saying to itself, dude, I got no more room to poop here. I got, <laughs> there's, there's, I can't, the toilet's backed up. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get sicker. So then the cell says to itself, I'm just not going to take it in. Yeah. So oh, wow. Through. So that's where absorption issues come from. Right. Some of them. Then what'll yeah. happen is that you've just got that really, really thick bit of the fluid that sits around the cells called the interstitial fluid. Yep. And then you develop this uh, uh, toxicity. And then that may manifest in different systems and symptoms later. So I have a central tenet that I teach. It, this is in relationship to chronic disease. Two simple steps, right? You either have too many toxins in your body, too many toxins in there that can't get out, yeah. 
or you have too many coming in faster than you can get it out. Yep. Right. So it's, it's the first thing you got to do is get toxins out and then try to reduce the ones that are going in. Right. So you've either got a toxicity without question and you have a deficiency. So two causes of chronic disease are this uh -huh. toxicity, uh -huh. too much of something or not enough of something that's called a deficiency. Those are your nutrients. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So this, that order is important because if I just Huge. cram supply nutrients in before a detox, they ain't going to be the same. That's why if you go to a doctor and they give you a bag of 25 pills, it probably won't do squat for you. Yep. Because, because you're already loaded to the gunnels with problems and toxicity and, and you won't yeah, get a got a gut that's got about a billion holes in it. How are you well, going to absorb all that? And then it's got to go towards the liver that's all backed up. And they might be really good things. Yeah. But the body says, I can't, uh, I can't absorb it. So, sorry, it's going right out. See, but it comes, comes to my mind, um, is then something like, so like, you know, um, selfishly asking for a case like my mum, who's, you know, older, she's 78, been through this horrific situation. Uh, was exposed to lots of medications along the way, which I've managed to get her mostly off. Um, but toxicity and lymph problems and, um, you know, I'm, I'm giving her the good nutrients. I'm doing the hyperbaric. I'm doing the ozone. I'm doing the, the God knows what I'm doing. I'm doing everything. But I'm still struggling with the, the fluid retention in her body, which would suggest to me something lymphatic going on. Yep. Um, but she's fragile, obviously. She's not, you know, she's not a 20-year-old. Um, obviously, I need to go and do your course. That, that, that's clear. Um, can you get someone back from that level, you know, that, that they can actually start to be able to absorb better the stuff that I am giving her now? And the second part of the question is, how important would, uh, say, intermittent fasting be is in, in the process of eliminating the toxicity from... So it's, Two two part question there. Yeah, no problem. That's a great question. Yes, there's always a uh, possibility, right, of uh, being able to improve how the lymphatic system functions, because many people just don't know about the system, mm. so they don't know what they don't know, and then once they know about it, they don't know what to do about it, right? So it's simple steps to do it, and that's what I try to teach in this program is that if anybody has excess fluid in their body fluid retention that's going to be some lymphatic system issues that are about the only system but it's going to be a big one mm. and then you have to you have to work your way in slowly there's a very specific system that we teach because we know when you are like that for instance with your mom you're probably going to struggle with detoxification exactly. you have to go easy yeah so then you go from superficial lymph, which is mostly near the skin, and we teach you techniques that are mostly skin-driven, like brushing or using your, um, your hands, and then you can tiptoe your way in. But those super, the things at your skin are the endpoints of your lymph, and then they ultimately have to go very deep into the body. And, and what they call the deep lymphatic system that sits right along your spine and in your abdomen wow. if those are blocked right that's that's where you get your back we call it a backflow from they the lymph can still move if it didn't move at all you'd be dead in two days like it moves but it it can have sections that it moves better in and slower and it becomes mm -hmm. thicker with and what they call more viscous but what they're understanding about the lymphatic system is, is that you're only, and I've, I've kind of coined this phrase here, is that you're only strong and resilient as your most vulnerable lymph node. Wow. That you can have one lymph node. You got about 700 of them. Yep. And you can have one that's blocked. And then that one, if it has pathology to it, which means it just doesn't flow or a swollen or inflamed or bacteria or toxins or anything stuck in there, that can cause a problem anywhere in your body. Wow, just anywhere, one. Cause anywhere, because it, it basically controls pressure in the body. 
because everything is about fluid movement and fluid pressure. Yep. So when you study how fluid moves in physics, it's called hydrodynamics. Mm -hmm. Hydrodynamics. That's the physics of fluid flow. The basics of hydrodynamics is this. High pressure in fluid always flows towards low pressure. Uh Just think about a dam where water is high. There's no water on the other side. So if I just lift up the dam, it flows towards the low pressure side. Uh Well, your body is the same way. Right, the lymph all wants to flow to the lowest pressure point in the body, which for your lymphatics is actually right above the collarbones on both sides. Wow! So that's the lowest pressure where lymph is. It's where the it dumps into the veins, and that's the lowest pressure. The venous system is right at the collarbone, and what's called your subclavian, sub below clavian clavicle, below your collarbone. And then you've got the highest pressure in your lymph at your feet uh-huh. and um, in your head. So they all want to flow towards there like a huge dam. But if I block one, right, say behind your knee, which is a huge one, that's going to influence the pressure where? Everywhere else in how it flows, not just on where it's stuck. Because now the body has to compensate for the loss of pressure Right. Over here. Yeah. Right. Let's just think about that dam. I mean, if I opened up only one small part of the dam as opposed to the whole thing, how everything else has to change its course to go towards that one side. And then when you find people who struggle with issues in the brain mm-hmm. or because you have inflammation in the brain. Yep. Yep. And then that's where they're finding a lot of neurodegenerative disorders where you get Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Yep. They're getting buildup of toxins in yeah. the brain called amyloid, amyloid plex. Yep. That develop because they can't drain from the lymphatics. And that's part of the, because, yeah, I'm studying Alzheimer's yep. yesterday. Um, exactly. that, that was a question in my head. Yeah, is that is that a, a limp thing as well? Because they're and sitting in the synapses. Out. Yeah. Right. And then, so, and then the, the biggest place where you can get stuck is in the abdomen. There's a spot that's about two inches up from your belly button, right mm-hmm. in the center of your abdomen. Mm-hmm. That's the largest lymph node in the body called your cisterna chile. Cisterna mm-hmm. chile. That gathers all of the lymph from the abdomen and the lower body and then brings it back up to the neck. Wow. And it takes it from the liver. That's the spot that gets the biggest blockage uh-huh. there and also behind your sternum behind your chest bone uh-huh. yep they get stuck here but nobody knows it's stuck there but it is but that pressure builds up and then they feel pain everywhere else in my shoulder and my hip and my back and my neck and my elbow Taunt. yep because oh, it's pressure builds up and then pressure radiates out wow right so what you have to do is that that's why when I see people who've had traumatic brain injuries of any type uh-huh. or problems anywhere in the body, you, the brain will drain. We have a program for brain drainage as well, but that's only going to drain as well as the abdomen drains. Uh-huh. And how the, do you the, make the, that drain? The lymph, yeah, the lymph in the head, in the brain, drains to the deep, the lymph nodes in the neck and then that has to drain to those spots at the collarbone Mm -hmm. and then that goes back to the heart and then it goes out again through the vascular system but we know that the lymphatic system is a pressure system so if i've got back if i'm stuck in the space two inches above my belly button Mm -hmm. i've got a big pressure block below and above that spot which means that pressure is going to affect how the lymph can drain from my brain down to my neck so in order to get the fluid flow right the hydrodynamic pressure flow have to be able to clear the nodes lower and it goes reverse so i've had people who get a lot of swelling for instance in a leg Mm -hmm. So it's called lymphedema, yep. or maybe you just sprain your ankle and your swelling just never goes away. Yep. Well, the biggest lymph node with that is going to be behind your knee, 
But then from there, the next biggest one is going to be in the groin. And then from there, the next biggest one is going to be at the navel and then two inches above the navel and then at the sternum and then the neck. So I have to check all of those. And then the one that's the most stuck is the one that's preventing the ankle from draining. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody's going to attack your ankle with ice yeah. and lasers. And that's great because you're trying to reduce inflammation. But I always ask him. Where is all that inflammation got to go? Yep. It's got to go out. And where's it got to go? Through your lymphatics. Your lymphatics <laughs> eliminate swelling. Yep. And then your lymphatics ultimately take it where? In towards the kidney. So I got to make sure your detox organs work well. Are working. That's where all these systems come together like that way. And why, when you look at a an uh, individual standing in front of you with quote unquote a diagnosis of whatever it is. Uh, I have to look at all the lymphatic system first. Um, and the majority of the time, I will find it uh, significantly vulnerable and needing work. Yep. Because nobody's ever done anything intentionally to it. And here's the joke that I tell people is that I say, how many people are doing when I teach a class, because I teach courses on this, I ask a question, thinking, how many of you are doing lymphatic work now? I just do a little bit of a quiz. And you know, a couple people raise their hand or say yes. I say, actually, you're all doing it. You're just doing it by accident. Which means you're, you're always moving lymph anytime you do anything. Yep, right? you need some body work. moving moves lymph and breathing through your diaphragm really moves lymph. Uh -huh. That's big. why that's so powerful. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Light diaphragm bulb. breathing moves lymph. That's the, one of the uh -huh. big things. So you're already, you're doing that already, but I tell people, I want you to have a system of approach now yeah. where you have an uh, intention of how to clear those pathways. So when you do those things, it can move more efficiently. Yeah. So that's why breathing is so important because breathing through the diaphragm moves the internal organs a lot. Wow, you're connecting a whole lot of dots for me. There's just like yeah. bulbs going off in my brain going, I know that breathing is powerful. Uh, I, yeah, I know, uh, you know that the, the, the lymph system, and, and I know like intuitively as an athlete, if I don't get out every day and move my body from a cardiovascular point of view and, and get stuff moving, uh, I feel like uh, I'm toxic, you know, and that's partly maybe an addiction type of response because I'm not getting my BDNF and my runners high and so on. But it's also <laughs> a, a real physical thing that I think when I'm moving my, my, my body around and I'm moving all the fluids around and the blood around, I'm, I'm probably doing some of that limp stuff without knowing that I'm yeah, doing the you limp are. Stuff. Well, That's why walking is so great. It's probably the best way to, to move yep. limp. Otherwise, when you don't, when you don't move, right, you feel stagnant. Totally. But here, here's the crazy part, right? We exercise is, uh, and movement we need as human. It's healing in so many different ways. Oh yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: when you when you train and you exercise, you actually create a lot of toxins because you break down tissue. Mm -hmm. That's what training is. Yeah, it's like oxidative stress. exercise, yep. you break down and you destroy cells because you're supposed to make new ones and lots of them so you can get stronger. Mm -hmm. right? So then I ask people this. What happens if you have a system that's already toxic and your lymphatic system is stagnant and then you want to go exercise and you want to move, you're going to create more toxins. Yeah, you oxidative stress and breaking stuff down. And... So what happens is that's why a lot of people feel worse when they exercise because they uh -huh. get more toxins. Uh -huh. And then the body will go do a couple things. First thing it's going to do is make you quit. Yeah. Because this sucks. I'm not yeah, going to do this. I feel like um, shit afterwards. <laughs> it plants the seed and you're like, ah, I'm going to quit. And then you end up quitting. Uh, or what it's going to do is it's going to make a deal with it like this way, right? And then most of the time what it'll do is it'll send that excess uh, toxicity to body fat. 
Wow. So this is like, yeah, like I'm an athlete, right? I've spent my 25 years running stupid long distances. When I did, was doing the really long stuff, I was my heaviest that I've never been. Right. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I was constantly in a state of fight or flight. I was constantly like my hormones were up the wops. Now I'm wondering, yeah, was it because of that? Was I putting fat tissue on? And I wasn't hugely overweight, but I was puffy. I had puffy face. I had a, I felt heavy. And yeah. I could, I was fit. I could run a couple of hundred kilometers at a time, but I was not healthy. And I know, mm. like, since I've stopped doing the long distance stuff, um, I'm much, much healthier, a lot fitter, a lot leaner uh, than I ever was then. Um, is that because the body is getting, okay, fat tissue to grab the toxins, to yep. cover up the toxins, to protect the body from the toxins? Is that what's Yeah, that's part exactly of it? what's, It'll take everything and it'll wrap it in fat and yep. it'll pull, pull it away from the vital structures because your detox systems can't work efficiently. So fat storage, it'll, it'll put it in there. And then what will happen is it will not let you burn body fat because you'll release more toxins. Yeah. So then the yeah. other strategy is this. Remember when we talked about the fluid around the cells can get really uh, thick? Yep. And viscous. Viscous. Yep. And like the tank, mm -hmm. just it doesn't flow well. So the, the brain will sense that and say, you know what? The cells are sitting in this really thick fluid. So then it has to find a way to dilute it. So what it does is it takes your water that you drink and it puts it around the cells, not in it, in a cell. Wow. So you hold Puffy. water to take away the, to try to take away the toxicity in the surrounding cellular environment that it lives in. Because the health of the external environment determines the health of the internal environment, not the other way around. External is more important than internal. So it'll keep the water outside to try to dilute the tank. So envision the tank, you know, is pretty crappy, yep. right? You've got room in the tank. Mm -hmm. You'll just keep putting more water in. So the to tank dilutes. is crappy. Di it's yep. diluted. So that's what the... the and then you the look all puffy. Well. Yeah. So you get puffy, you get swollen, and you drink a lot of water, but you're always dehydrated because you yeah. can't absorb. Okay, so the water's not going in. Not going into the cell. It's just like food. Just because you eat food doesn't mean that it's going into anywhere. You're not absorbing oh. it just because you eat it. Eating does not mean absorbing. Yeah, yeah. Drinking does not mean absorbing. Yeah. But then people say, well, what the hell am I going to do, man? I mean, I want to exercise to <laughs> shape. Yeah. And then I say, all you got to do first is what I told you in the beginning of the show. Yeah. Drainage precedes supply. All I want you to do is drain your limp first, and then, then you start to do those movements. And then what will happen is the body can take that release of the moving into the exercise and stuff like that. Because it's just the order that you do it in. So you always do your lymphatic resets first. first. Then you do your movements. Then you do your nutrients, things like that. And you move lymph every day. And so, okay, and this is where it's important that you get, obviously, um, either a pr trained practitioner, someone who's maybe done one of your courses, or you go and do your courses. Now, your courses are really made for the average person. They're not for, don't have to be a doctor to go and do one of your courses. In fact, you're doing them online now, aren't you? Um, yeah, I mean, all you got to do is people say, Doc, I'm not a healthcare professional. Can I come to your course? I say, are you a human being? You're good to go. Like you can come <laughs> to my course because I make it that simple. Yeah. So I show you many, many different techniques to be able to go there all the mm -hmm. way down. Uh, because it's something that every human being needs to know. And you can do self treatments. You can do it to someone else. And I make it very easy to understand. Yep. And absolutely you can go through the program. It's not difficult at all. And I jokingly say but when I show people how to do the techniques, because I go from very basic to more advanced, which doesn't, advanced doesn't mean difficult. It just means deeper mm -hmm. limb. And then people usually say two things. 
one, why in the hell didn't somebody tell me this before? Because this is like really important. And then yeah. if it was so important, why didn't they tell me this before? Yeah. Yeah. And then I say, I ask myself that question every day. Every day. <laughs> Good question. Why didn't they tell you? Yeah. And I've come to realize in the medical world that that is quite a common question that I've been asking myself a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's very frustrating and they're doing their best, I will say. I mean, they're all doing it because they want to try to help somebody. But, you know, sometimes you just get this narrow focus yep. view. Yeah. So they say that and then the next, that other one is this. It can't be that simple. Like, that's it? That's like, not enough. It's that's not hard all enough. I got to do. You show me. This is all I got to do. It takes me two minutes. <laughs> and it's going to make that much of a difference? Yes. And then they say, how? Like, By the end of this course, you'll understand it because it's all about toxins, right? Nutrients. But it really always comes down to that hydrodynamics. Once you yeah. understand how pressure moves in the body, how fluids move in the body, and unblocking that. Because your body, your lymph already knows where it needs to go. You just, just need to help. Get there. You just got to help it get there, right? Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. And then the lymph's like, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now I can get where I want to go. And then once you do that, it'll just take over. And it, it's not... It's complex systems like the body are really not complicated at all. They, we make them complicated, mm -hmm. but they're really not. And that's one of the reasons why people, when they take my program, they, they do it because it's so simple to do. And that's one of the reasons daily. I designed it this way. Yep. Because I needed to make something where it was reasonable for somebody to introduce it into their life. It was practical. Yep. And that they could notice a quick change and they would be like, Hey, if I feel this good with just one to two, there's a one minute version. I mean, I can have you done in one minute. Then there's a two minute standard version you do every day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, I do? I do. imagine how I would feel if I work my way to the full one, the deep stuff. Yep. Then they want a little bit more, right? A little bit more. And then they get there on their own. And in the beginning of my program, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I made mistakes as well. Like I'm trying to design it to be effective, but in the beginning it was just too much to do from a standpoint of time. Mm -hmm. Plus I learned a valuable lesson by studying more on the body is that if you do too much, too fast, too soon it makes people worse. Yep, because the overloading the toxic slow down the healing process. Uh -huh. So I actually said, I'm not going to give you the full thing right out of the gate. Yep, because most people can't handle it. Yeah, and it is danger. You know, there is danger with doing this wrong, isn't it? Like if um, too, you know, I have a tendency to do everything full bore. Um, and and <laughs> I've you know been doing your two minute um, protocol. Um, my business partner is trained in it and with you, and uh, uh, um, I I want to go hard, you know, because everything I do I go hard. <laughs> but he keeps saying, "Don't go hard." Not in this case, you know. It's it's a gently gently type of situation. It's just like I always quit it, like training and running. Yeah, I could pop open the door and on my first run, I could probably blast through five miles if I'm lucky. Yeah. But that's not smart. Like, <laughs> Straight out of the gate. The following day, or you do a two hour workout at the gym and then you can't sit on the toilet seat for three weeks, right? <laughs> and so just because you can doesn't mean that you should. And yep. it's the same thing with the body, especially when you're dealing with detoxification, because what happens is, is that detox means that you'll feel worse before you get better. You get tired, yeah. you get fatigued, lethargic, feel a little nauseous. Symptoms come back or symptoms you haven't had in a long time come back. And, and that's normal, right? But if you do too much, you can get what's called a retoxification. And retoxification means that you can be really sick for up to a month wow. and you feel really bad. And if you follow the system the way that I designed it, I created what, what I call a, a lymph clock. Basically, you 
follow like the, the hands on a clock of one, two, three, four, five, six around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you do each phase. Then if you do phase one and you feel okay, then you've earned the right to go to phase two. Gotcha. That's awesome. Then if you do phase two and then, then you can move to three. But if you do phase two and you don't feel good, you have to go back to number one for a little while and then tiptoe into number two, then you can go around. If you follow it like that, you won't get a retox. Yeah, you retox. won't get really, really ill because you're t dumping too much toxins into the body all at once. And yeah, so yeah, if somebody, first of all, has so many toxins in there that they're just gonna get sick. But like you said, some people have poor detoxification yeah. mechanism. Yeah, and like I do. they need to go yeah easy on them that's why when you show somebody how to rub the skin or mm -hmm. brush the skin and do little taps on it they're like how in the hell is that doing anything yeah well when you understand where uh how much lymph sits below the skin when you understand where these primary clusters of nodes sit so the lymphatic system has lymph has lymph nodes and nodes are where all the lymph fluid goes into and then the body starts to attack it and break things down through the immune system like it starts to kill the cancer the virus the bacteria and you may know swollen lymph nodes when you see it on your neck yep. or below your jaw yep. right yep. and you want to Hit check them. that or sometimes you'll have it in the armpit or the groin and so those are clusters, what I call node roads. Those are where pressure gets blocked, right? But also those clusters, interestingly enough, lie around the areas of the, your body that are supposed to have the most mobility. There's a reason that they cluster around your shoulder joint wow. or your hip joint. Oh. So they cluster around your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and right where your skull attaches to your spine at the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is right in the center of your abdomen because you're supposed to twist a ton. You're wow. supposed to rotate a ton. Lots of twisting. Nobody rotates because how the hell am I going to look at my phone if I rotate? <laughs> right? So those areas don't move when you sit all day. So they get stagnant. Yep. So those actually are the primary areas where you stimulate the lymph or why if you just do lots of movement in your shoulders or your hips or your legs and your torso otherwise known as walking <laughs> it can really really help so now i tell people all i want you to do before you walk is to do your one or two minute reset and then walk wow because it'll make a huge difference on the outcome of that walk and you'll have more mobility too you'd have more actual range of motion probably right because because i tie this to neuroscience and pain science and the brain because all those areas that you're rubbing are around joints and when you stimulate those through the technique you stimulate what we call proprioception which is how your brain knows where body parts are yep and if and I how important feel, that one is. If I can feel my shoulder joints, if I can feel my hip joints, if I can feel my knees and my abdomen, because I just did the technique, well, then when I move and I walk, I'm going to have better body awareness, better sensory awareness when I move. Wow. And sensory awareness improves movement output. Oh, absolutely. I mean, with mum, you know, brain damage, massive brain damage. Like a proprioception was well non-existent. She didn't know where she stopped in space or where, how, you know, she, she thought this was straight. She, you know, she didn't have any idea and there was no feedback coming back. Um, and one of the, the last residues of some of the problems are still, you know, when I tell her to make her elbow straight and we're doing, I don't know, kettlebell swings or something, she doesn't know what straight elbows are. She doesn't know what elbows do. She still doesn't quite get that concept because that part of her brain was broken that proprioception was broken um and i know she's definitely got some other stuff going on so that this is quite exciting you know like for the next step in the process with her for example 
um, you know, let alone for everyone else that we're working with. But um, this is, it's connecting a heck of a lot of do dots in my head. But well, yeah. I'm really glad to hear that because that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get people to connect. So it yeah. goes back to that ecosystem yep. where all those systems connect. It's, it's the interaction and the relationships. That's the biggest thing that I try to teach people when, when I go through my programs uh, is not just about a system. Because we learn that and we learn that in physiology books, but nobody tells us how to put them together. Mm. And that's, that's really what made this fun for me because I was very disillusioned. I was very unhappy mm -hmm. with practice because I, it wasn't fun for me anymore. This yeah. to me is really fun because it forces me to think about how this would respond to that yep. and how it res would respond far removed from the initial event later on, like this way. And it's a lot of puzzle pieces together. And one of the things that I'm really blessed when I have people send me messages, because I get messages from people all over the world yeah, who say, yeah. Thank you for the video because I, I made an online video that we'll probably talk about, but you know, yep. uh, that I did it and it made such a, a ch positive change. And I just wanted to say it was all different walks of life. Mm. But then I also had people who are in the field as medical practitioners say, this was really exciting because it kind of made it fun for me to, again, to really begin to think about how all these things work together and you forget how absolutely miraculous and awe-inspiring the, the human body is yep that all these systems are always working to help restore you and they're not the breaking down to punish you and it can feel that way yeah and you you've suffered for a long time but it's yep. the exact opposite it's just they're just doing the best that they can yep. and it's a <laughs> right? hey i need something changed here <laughs> something's not well working. that's my definition of pain uh, to me pain is a request for change mm. that's what i call it and then yep. it's a request it's just trying to work out change. what that change is for that Thing. Usually it's going to be a habit or a behavior. And then now I tell people the change is this. Start working your lymphatic system. That's what I want you to do. That's the yeah. biggest change. That's, this, is, this is really exciting. I've got one last question for you because this is just, a, again, I love connecting dots. So um, I've done two different things in the past. One is called EECP therapy, um, which is where you're, you're strapped into this, this machine that pumps everything, your whole body, you, you, you sort of, tied up in these velcro things that are tight around your legs and it oh. pumps yeah oh. and, um i used to work at a clinic for a few years doing that and then now i'm uh, had a hyperbaric oxygen therapy clinic after the success that i had with mum and then yeah. hyperbaric you're also under pressure yeah. um is that going to be influencing or both of those do you think going to be influencing the lymph is that why those things are, or one of the reasons why those things are successful? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So the ones at the legs, think about that. So that's the one that's going to compress and yep. do like a little wave. Yep. So it's like a pump, right? Yep. That's exactly. It's kind of like what your lymph is. It's just being pumped. Yeah. And now that you know, if you've got it wrapped around your legs, now you know when it's pumping that fluid, where's that fluid ultimately going? all the way up at the, the bottom of your neck at your collarbone. Mm -hmm. It's going back to your heart. Wow. So now I tell people this, now that you know how fluid pressure moves, how can you make those leg things work even better? Wow. Because all those leg things are gonna push that lymph to places above the waist that can have blockages in them. And the biggest block is gonna be two inches above your belly button. Yep. And you're behind your sternum. So now what you do is you clear the abdomen and you clear the sternum and you clear the neck before you put those things on. Your wow. Leg. Oh, yeah. Because so, what yeah. happens if I'm pumping the legs and I'm sending it to a block at my sternum? Mm. They're going to go right back down to the legs. Oh, wow. Right. This could so just, just, just when you once you understand the concept of pressure, it's easy to figure out. Mm -hmm. It's easy to figure out, and then those will because those work. 
Those, oh, yeah, those do. work okay. well, but yeah. I'm going to say, how can you optimize it? Yeah. The same thing with hyperbaric oxygen. First of all, they're trying to increase pressure in your body mm -hmm. to increase oxygen saturation. Mm -hmm. Yep. To the exactly. pile drive that into things. Yep. Exactly. Well, so what you can do is the same thing. Just remember, Dr. Perry said this. He said it. Drainage precedes supply. Drainage precedes supply. And it's the same thing with oxygen. Most people, actually, not all, but most people have plenty of oxygen in the body. They just can't get to the tissues. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's why, why you oxygen. Hyperbaric. Yeah, hyperbaric because it's smaller. It's making it smaller and it's compressing. Yep. So then what you want to do is if you can clear the lymph, help the interstitial fluid, then you'll be much more successful. Because oh, wow. lymphatic work is not designed to be standalone by itself. Yeah. It, you do it, and what it does is it, it heightens, it accentuates, it improves your other things you're already doing. Gosh. So it amplifies. It's not yeah. it's not replacing what you're doing at it's all. It's an amplifier. It's all it does is it amplifies that. So now that other work and what people say to me, you know, I was doing some things and then uh when I did the lymph work, the other stuff, I even got better results from it. And then I'm like, okay, wow. well now why why did that happen? You tell me. And then Drainage. they figure it out. Yep, right? and supply, okay. yeah. Because all these therapies that you're trying to do on people, you're doing it for a reason, usually to decrease pain, which means you got swelling. I'm trying to decrease, decrease inflammation, decrease swelling, right? Get rid of old dead red blood cells in there, get fresh new oxygenated blood in there, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All the therapies are trying to do that. Yep. So that's great. But all I want to do is to make sure that the bad cells can get out. And then the new stuff that you're trying to get in there can get to it and not only get to it, but stay there. That's the key. Gosh. And Let's go. Somebody will say, dude, I got this, man. I got this. <laughs> but they lose the ability to make new cells that work. And just because you have ingredients doesn't mean you can make a new cell that work. You have to have both ends of it and that's all i'm trying to teach people then the wow. light bulbs go off and then they usually say you know what they say that makes a lot of sense it does or this connects a lot of dots mm -hmm. that's that is, exactly what i'm trying and that, to do. that's exactly what this conversation has done for me in a huge way so yeah. dr perry you've done uh you mentioned a video there um what is that video and where can people access it and then is there a full course that people can go and do online or is it only in the live workshops that you can get the advanced stuff so for people out there who are you know wanting to do a real deep dive into this um, what are the two couple of options that you've got there and what are the other stuff that you've got going on your your website and your your programs great well thank you for asking um well probably the easiest one for people to start with is the the basic and fundamental i mean this is like where you always start and it's called uh, Body Aquarium Lymphatic Mojo. Mm -hmm. And anyone can purchase it. Once you get it, it's a streaming video that you purchase and you can watch it via Vimeo, the mm -hmm. hosting format on Vimeo, similar to YouTube. And you can stream it for life. You own it for life. You can watch it as often as you want to. And it's about two hours long and it teaches you and educates you about the system, shows you how to assess it how to treat it on yourself and others. That's the basics. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to go deeper in there, then I go into uh, advanced techniques where I show the deeper lymphatics. Yep. And I also show you a few different hands-on techniques and then you can learn how to move the organs of the body as well mm -hmm. for the deep lymph. Mm -hmm. Anybody can go to that one as well. And before the the COVID and the pandemic and thing that hits the world, the world, I used to travel all over the world to teach yep. that course. But now, of course, with the restrictions, I've been doing webcast for it. Mm -hmm. So you can register for the two day webcast. It's done um, via Zoom, which I think most of the world is on anyway. Yep, and uh, it's, it's two six hour days, and then it's me teaching it. 
Wow. And it's limited to 30 people. Only allow 30 people on at a time because it's very kind of close knit. Yep. And we go through the whole systems. And then after the webcast, you get a video recording of the webcast. And you also get all the materials, the support materials afterwards. Wow. To be able to do the techniques for, for for life as well so it's uh, isn't it amazing like the the covid's changed the way we think and operate and that's just a a, a, a brilliant example of adapting to <laughs> the state of affairs <laughs> well you know so many people now are under even more stress than ever before mm. and it's causing a lot of these um new autoimmune diseases to ma manifest in people which they all of a sudden they get it or if people have had an autoimmune disease in the past, this it resurfaces again yep, yep. because of the incessant the stress, yeah. stress that they're having. And mm -hmm. then and when you have all that stress, you get really tense, you get really tight, right? Yeah. Well, you get tense and tight. Guess what doesn't move? Limp. There you go. <laughs> Limp and blood doesn't move. So you become stagnant. And then, so now more than ever, it's important for people to uh, do that. And I know we usually try to have one a month. My my one in july is sold out but i got one coming up in august and uh but you um you can check out more there my website stopchasingpain.com is kind of the central hub for mm -hmm. everything where Stop you can stopchasingpain.com i'll put that in the show notes mm -hmm. um and yeah I'll put, I'll put the links to that video that people can buy the ones that just want to do the two hour uh you know webinar workshop um and then yep. the two day to two day course for those who want to do a really deep dive into this. Um, I'll certainly right. be doing that in August. Um, Dr. Perry, I I'm respectful of your time. I don't want to, you know, take up too much of your, <laughs> your time. Um, this has been just mind blowing. Uh, I knew it was going to be, uh, but I didn't quite know it was going to be that great. So I'm um, uh -huh. super excited now. I, and it's just given me so much impetus, you know, because I'm always looking for the next thing for mum and for the clients that I'm working with and, and for myself. Um, uh, it, it, it's connected in a lot of dots. I'm going to have to go over and re-listen to this a couple of times and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and start to, because, you know, it's so exciting. Like, you know, you're putting in the good food and you have good supplements and you're doing the hyperbaric and you're doing the exercise and you're doing this and you're doing that. And you think, hang on, there's still something missing. We're still not getting a hundred percent. I want more. I want more. <laughs> you know, I want perfection. So, uh, well, not perfection, but I want bloody good. So, <laughs> um, this has been one of those aha uh -huh moments in life, I think, for me, that the lymphatic system is just that important. Um, so really excited to see where this all takes us. So, Dr. Perry, thank you so much for coming on the show. Stopchasingpain.com, everybody. Go and check that out. I will put that in the, in the show notes. Dr. Perry, any last words of wisdom that you want to share with people before we wrap it up? Oh, gee, I don't know if I got anything left in my brain at this point. <laughs> You've poured a heck of a lot out, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I just want people to realize that there's, you can really become empowered to take back control of your life from yes. chronic pain or illness or disease. And because um, I've been there. I, yeah. I, I know what it's like, right? And usually you're going to have to find that answer quite honestly on your own mm -hmm. but and also when you venture out there you realize that you're actually not alone you'll find a lot of others that have been through it and that happened to me it's it's really funny it's like the law of attraction where you ever gotten something like you bought a car and then you drive it off the lot and you're like who the hell when did everybody get my car like, <laughs> yeah, you know? yep 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 the race filter in action <laughs> it's always been there you just never noticed it yep and then that happens with disease or pain. You realize that how many others are suffering. like yourself that are out there. So even though you might be going on that journey initially on your own, I want for people to realize that you never truly are. And it's an opportunity to learn, to grow, to connect and find people like you, um, you yeah. know, the, the, the people who are in, 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 it can lead to blessings. Like, your autoimmune disease led you down this path. This has made you help thousands of people around the planet. The journey that I've been on, same deal. You know, it was hell. Don't want to repeat it. Don't want to go back there. 
but there is a silver lining if you go and look for it in everything and you can take that knowledge and you can share it with someone else and you can give and help somebody else and therein lies the value of that whole experience you know absolutely well yeah. said <laughs> well thank you dr perry for your time today really really appreciate it everybody go and check it out stopchasingpain.com and reach out to dr perry uh you're on instagram and i'm follow you on instagram it's fantastic i um everybody go and follow you on there that's also at stop chasing pain isn't it yeah, stop chasing yep. pain on Instagram. I think I'm on there probably an unhealthy amount, but it's yes. great. Some good <laughs> stuff comes through there. So you, <laughs> it's not the crap that you see on Instagram. It's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh.